Hey, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks for coming down. You're welcome. Um, I want to introduce you all to, to Kathy. Um, Kathy's a female that I've met during the World Cup. Um, been working here, been here since March, um, and is just going to explain her experience yeah. since you've been here. Yeah. Um, what you're doing here, what it's been about, um, how, how you found it, how you found Qatar, um, anything else? No, I think that about covers it. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kathy. Um, I have been out here since March, as you just stated. I've been working here on the World Cup. I'm an team producer. And basically, um, I've had the most amazing experience here. Um, there's been a lot of negative press, uh, especially in America and Europe, and even Australia, you were saying, yeah. regarding Qatar. And I just would like to put a few things on the record. Um, in the ten, well, the eight months I've been here, um, I have found this country to be one of the safest countries I've ever lived in. Um, yes. After living in LA for 31 years, spending a lot of time back in England, which is my home country, um, I've never felt as safe in those countries as here. Yes, yes. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, I mean, I'm going to try to give you some examples. Um, but there's no violent crimes here. No, so for, for that record, there was no violent crimes here. No, there's no violent crimes here. There's, there's no muggings. Um, as a female on my own here, and I moved out here on my own, I took a position to come out and work in the World Cup. Yes. And I've been here on my own. And I've gone out on my own. I've gone out to, you know, hear DJ spin at hotels and... I've walked around the city, I go to Super Akif all the time, and I've never felt more safe in all my life. Like, it's ridiculous, yes. uh, like, how safe it is. I'll give you an example. I left my cell phone on a restaurant table when I went, went out for lunch. I went back again after work later that evening to pick it up. It was still on the same table. Where about is this? Uh, I'm not going to name, okay. right, because I don't want to drop brand names, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a pretty, very, very popular <laughs> restaurant here. Yes. Uh, it was on the same table, and numerous people had sat on that table throughout the afternoon, having lunch mm. and coffee and tea, and my phone was still on the same table in exactly the same place where I left it. Would you get that Would you get that in London? No, got in London. LA? LA. LA? You've gone in seconds. You've been buying on the Facebook marketplace, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. You know, so, so you know, just an example of how safe it is. Um, it kind of, like, blows my mind uh, to, to, to how safe it actually is, especially as a woman. And another example, if I go out and I go out to see a DJ play, um, it's not like in, West, in Western worlds where guys will just come up and start talking to you, get really close. Um, the men here in the Arab nations were so polite. They would literally come up and say, is it okay if I can talk to you, please? So they're actually, they were, they're they're actually asking for permission to yeah. speak to a female here, yeah, they were, as opposed to, yeah. I know in Australia, we just uh, go up to that shit, I just see, hit, that, hit that chick up, see, see how you go, try your luck. Yeah, yeah, no, so polite. <laughs> they keep a, 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 a nice distance away from you. Yes. They will ask if it's okay to talk to you. And just because they ask, I actually, I'm happy to talk to them, yeah, even yeah, yeah. if they might not be, you know, the t you know, person I really am interested in. But because they're so quite the way they go about it, you know, I, I kind of feel like, yeah, well, you know, you were nice, so um, I, you know, I will, I will talk to you, and I'm, and a lot of them have a lot of questions, you know, where you're from, you know, how do you like Qatar, um, you know, just basic questions are very, very interesting as being here. Um, I went to uh, a nightclub here um, at one of the hotels, and even though the, the whole nightclub was packed full of people, just to get to the actual bar, you have to kind of walk <coughs> through part of the dance floor, and literally you walk through, and men just move up the way and let you through. I mean, it's unbelievable. You get to the bar, and they will literally, they will let you go to the bar before them. They'll mm. offer you to go to the bar before them. Just like you get on the metro here, they will stand up and give you their seats. You don't have to ask. The moment you walk on the train, they will automatically stand up to give you your seats. What? 
why do you think that sort of stuff, the positive stuff that you're saying as a female, why is that not being portrayed back home, Australia, England, USA? I don't know why, but all I can say is I'm sick of reading all the media reports on this place. Um, um, you know, I think the people writing those reports haven't actually been here. I think it's third-hand information. I think people have got vendettas against, you know, the Arab nation, the, the Arab, Arab, world, nation, the Arab world in general. Islam. They haven't actually come here to check it out, yeah. to actually see it for themselves. And I'm telling you, you know, I love it here. And I mean, there's just so many other things too about this place I love. I mean, so for instance, um, Her Highness, Besides doing the bid for the World Cup, and I mean, for all those people out there who have not seen the YouTube video of her speech for the bid for the World Cup, she is a lioness. She is so fierce. Her speech is so inspiring. Think, if, she, if she says that fierce, I think, uh, and she's a lioness, I think uh, Southgate could use a bit of that fierceness in him, I reckon. <laughs> with, the, with, the th with the three lions. But exactly. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> But anyway, she's amazing. And, you know, one of the first things she did um, when, uh, was go and team up with seven, seven or eight of the top universities, Cornell, Northwestern, you know, Ivy League colleges in America. There's even a John Moores University from my home city of Liverpool here. And the first thing she did was then give scholarships to women and people who, uh, who are poor people here who couldn't afford to go to university. Uh, so they can have a proper education. Yeah, you, can, yeah. you can get a scholarship here as a woman to go to Cornell to study medicine here. Mm. I mean, Cornell's one of the top universities in America, you know? And every, everyone says that, you know, women here are degraded and they haven't got any rights. It's like, I'm sorry, I don't know where you're getting that press, but that is so not well, true. The, the word I was told and the word I was hearing was the females here, the Sheilas were oppressed. Have you felt oppressed? Not oppressed at all. Have you, felt, have you felt oppressed since you've been here at all? No, not no. at all. And like, you know, and, and again, so many women here, um, I mean, especially working on the World Cup, working in managerial positions at the top hotels, working at, you know, working um, for the World Cup in many, many, many positions of authority, and they are local, local our women, you know? So I don't know why the media is spinning it the way they are, because it's not like that at all. And I mean, I was amazed too. I went to Saudi and um, I was in Riyadh. And when you get off the plane in Riyadh, all the immigration, passport control are all women. They're all women. We don't even have that in Heathrow, JFK, Los Angeles, J you know, LAX. We don't have any women doing immigration and passport control. So the, the, there's coming out men a whole heap of stuff where women are going to be oppressed. They, they've got to wear you know, the, the hijabs and the, and the burqas and, and, and the men that dictate how they live. But from my understanding, from what I've seen, they're more than happy. That that's, they're, they're proud of their culture and it's, it's no issue to them. It's only, yeah. it's only, you know, our Western world that makes it seem like there's that oppression. The only time in my life I've felt oppressed was when the state government locked us down in Western Australia for six months and I locked my job, uh, lost my job. I yeah. felt very oppressed. Yeah. You know, and that's living in the Western world. We, I shouldn't feel like that, losing my job no. over a, a, a choice for what I do with my body. So, but, but also, it's not, I mean, it's not that tight. As a woman here, you know, out of respect to culture, yes, you have to, you know, you don't wear shorts, uh, you wear anything, but it has to be below the knee, you know. Um, you don't, you don't, you, don't uh, you, you, you can't, you know, have bare shoulders, but you can wear t shirts, you know, and that's just out of respect. You know, but then also you will find if you go to the mall here, yes, you will see lots of Arab women wearing Western dress. You'll see a lot of Arab men wearing Western dress, wearing the you know, their Levi's, wearing you know, wearing their sneakers. You know, again, it has become so Westernized over here. And then you'll see women who do wear their hibbers and everything, but that's by, some of that's by choice. They have a choice to do that. You know, and actually, I've got quite a few. Uh, friends who, uh, who are, are, are up here and actually the women actually like to wear their hibbers because it takes the, the, the stress out of wondering what to wear you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is, they, they wear whatever they want at home right and when they go out they they, uh, they wear their hibbers just so they you know so, I mean, the, the standing joke some of my friends were saying how they actually wear the pajamas under the hibbers sometimes and go out because no one sees it mm -hmm. it's just so less stressful yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and, uh, and again 
this whole you know this whole presumption the whole that they are they are forced to do that. You know, it's a culture. They they you know they have you know they have that choice. You'll see a lot of our men here now who, who don't wear you know uh, the, the dish dash, right? They wear wet Western clothes, and then you'll see them with their wives who do wear hair bits. But then again, you'll see women who don't. You know, and again, yes. that's their choice, guys. They get to choose. You know, yeah. obviously, if you go to a holy place, you know, it's very important. If you go to like a heritage place or a holy place, one of the the mosque, whatever. Yeah, you know, they, they do ask you to cover your shoulders, and you know, you, you don't wear anything. Yeah, that's, above just, the that's, knee. Just, that's just but, respect. And that's out of respect. Yeah.